Now, certainly, I've got a very uh, special guest here, the Chief Investment Officer of Tomasic, Rahit Sipahimalani. Rahit, uh, thanks so much for your time this morning. I just wanted to start off by asking you about the events at the weekend. I know that in terms of Tomasic's uh, exposure to the Middle East, it's relatively speaking quite small, but are you concerned about some of the investments there? Well, we have literally a fraction of 1% of our investments are in that region, so that in itself is less of an issue. I think mean, clearly what it has done is uh, increased geopolitical risks. It's not that this was totally surprising. Uh, we've seen geopolitical risks in the Middle East, other parts of the world, increasing over the last few years. And when we've looked at our portfolio, that's something we take into account. So you know, at this point, clearly the markets don't seem to be reacting that much to it. The oil is relatively flat this morning. I think people are hoping there will not be escalation. You clearly can't assume that it will be that way, but at least for now it does seem that uh, it's in everyone's interest to try and contain things. So we'll see. But as far as our, our portfolio is concerned, as I said, you know, within that region, it's, uh, it's very minuscule. Any implications are more broader. If you do see a huge escalation in oil prices, not directly, but because of the macro implications, obviously it would have an impact on the economies globally. But uh, touch wood, so far, uh, things seem to be reasonably under control. Given the, I guess, growing uncertainty, instability in that region, do you think, though, that this will give perhaps more of an impetus in terms of climate investment, green transition? Well, I do believe that uh, the, the path towards green transition is, uh, is well on its way. And it's not just because of what's happening geopolitically, etc. I think it's just domestic politics. You know, we're seeing more and more climate crises, we're seeing more hurricanes, we're seeing more extreme weather, we're seeing pollution. That is impacting populations and people are demanding change from their politicians. So I think it's a political issue domestically in most places, which is why I think you're seeing momentum build up around that. So, you know, issues like this, just like the Russia-Ukraine war, I mean, temporarily it can sort of move things around a little bit. But fundamentally, I do think that the direction is pretty clear as to where we are going towards tackling climate change. Yeah, and I guess on that note, you've got climate activists saying that we're not moving fast enough. But many in the industry say this is a big issue and big transitions take time. Do you think we're striking the right balance when it comes to the transition? So, look, I think we can always move faster. It's, uh, you know, we could end up hitting the 1.5 degree increase in temperatures mark later on this decade. Uh, we don't have that much time, so we clearly need to move faster. There's no question on that. But the good news is that there does seem to be now more concrete action being taken. COP28 was very focused on specific things that can be done to move the needle forward. What do we do in the areas of renewables? What do we do in energy efficiency? What do we do in hydrogen? So these are all things which are happening. But look, clearly we can move faster. We need to move faster. We need to move as fast as we can.